just like the twins said. She was a goddess. Once dead Anna was transformed from an object of despite into one of worship. So who is Miss Stiletto Heels? The steps are close coming up to the body and then farther apart going away. There was a reason to hurry away then. That settles it then, George. Miss Stiletto Heels is a third party here. She's not the murderer. No one runs away from an object of worship. She could be another victim who was with Anna. Or perhaps an accomplice who fled for some reason. She is also one who took whatever it was Anna was holding on to in her hand. But why? Why did she leave her here? Only Miss Stiletto Heels knows the reason for that. She might know something about the man with the reversed peace mark, too. How many women wear high stiletto heels in this town, do you think? Oh, I should think most of them have at least one pair. I do, too, before you ask. But nobody would come all the way out here wearing them, except, well, except maybe one person. Don't keep me in the dark, then. Who might this elegant lady be? Diane, the owner of the art gallery. But she's out of town for a big art auction. I heard she'll be coming back in a couple days. Then we'll just have to give her a warm welcome home. A more immediate matter, then. Where in town can you find something like this? It should be a building that isn't used anymore, with either a lot of metal or metal machinery or something like that. The old lumber mill. But it's time to really get this show on the road. Could you guide me to this perfect setting for extravagant murder? far from here. If that's where she was killed, why would the killer go to all the trouble of carrying her all the way here? I don't know yet. My profiling instincts tell me one thing is for sure then. The unsub's personality is totally different before and after the crime. The unsub killed her in a brutal, horrifying way, and then displays powerful adoration after she's dead. Something close to love. That could well be the key to all this. I will say this, though, George. Profiling is a risky business. Of course, if the unsub planted those stiletto footprints himself, well, then, everything I've just said falls apart. But there's no evidence that he left those stiletto footprints. I'm sure we have Miss Stiletto Heels to thank for those tracks. All I can do is deduce the unsub's feelings in light of the evidence and carefully figure the unsub's M.O., modus operandi, his way of thinking. It usually unveils something that a normal forensic analysis may overlook. That's my way of profiling. It's not for everyone, but it works for me.
when I first joined the force, this lumber mill was still in full swing. It closed up right when I first moved here. And now it's totally abandoned. I presume so. I've never really been inside, so I don't know for sure, but it sure is run down. Deserted buildings are perfect for criminal hideouts and activities. I keep telling Harry to have a place to come down. Probably. We don't know that for sure yet, Agent Morgan. That's right. But the perpetrator is selected in love. Agent Morgan, you seem very confident about this. Confident? Confidence is a sweet spot. I'm just drawing natural conclusions from the facts that I've seen. That sounds exactly like you being full of confidence. And normal people with common sense. Common sense can be the opposite of facts. Oh, I will, Agent York. Thank you for having me on the stand. Either way, I'll know for sure by simply going to the home. So keep your pearls and liberty to yourself. Let's go. Well said, George. Can you step on it, Agent York? Facts can be trusted. You're full of confidence, right? Let's get to the lumber mill. I'm going in alone. You two stay here. I can't concentrate on profiling with other people around me. Now hold on a minute. We're investigating this case together. Listen, I can't risk the crime scene being compromised by you two. What are you saying? You're not the only professional law enforcement officer here, Agent Morgan. We know how to secure a crime scene. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. But this is how I operate. Furthermore... Yes? Furthermore what? To me? The outsider FBI agent? Every citizen of this town is a suspect. You two could be in on this whole thing for all I know. I have to keep suspects out of the crime scene. How can you say such a thing? Is he making fun of us? We should have left him behind and come here by ourselves. You're right. I've never been so insulted. Sorry, but I'm just doing my job. Zach, if they're pros, then we should let every first-person shooter gamer out there join the SWAT team. Zach, they're here.
Just as I thought, Zack. This is where Anna was killed. Too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle. Zack, it's almost like an altar. Was the murder some kind of ritual?
Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go.
That's all the information we need, Zack. Let's go back and show them what we found. Have you seen any of these things before? No, not that I know of. But that raincoat is a little odd. Odd? In a town where it rains so much? Well, the people here rarely go out in the rain. I moved here during high school and I never really understood why. Can you shed some light on this, George? No. Oh, well... There's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale, to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. A vicious killer in a bright red raincoat. Yeah, that was it. Just a foolish piece of superstition. A rubbish story someone made up. Not many people still believe it, but I guess it's a traditional place. Most of the shops still close up when it rains. School's out, too. And since there's no reason to go out, not many people ever wear raincoats. And now the raincoat killer has leapt out from his picture book. Oh, by the way, would you two kindly show me your backs? Our backs? Is this related to the case? The person with the upside-down peace mark in that photo we found. He's our killer. And what makes you so sure about that? Zack and I saw him kill Anna in the lumber mill. He killed her. Right in there. Oh, one thing. Please don't ask me about Zack. That's a 
private matter. Anyway, by showing me your backs, we can clear up most of my concerns about you. Isn't that for the best? You do want to remove yourselves from the suspect list. It will make things a lot easier. This is insane. Your methods are rude, insulting, and out of the question. And Emily is a female officer. Forcing her to show you her back is harassment. I don't care if you are FBI or not. You are out of line. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Hmm. George, it's okay. Let's just show him and get it over with. Emily, are you crazy? Look, we flash our backs and he'll start trusting us a little more. Right? Agent York? Are you satisfied now? Yes. My apologies. <sighs> now you, George. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can't refuse it now, can I? But don't expect to get your way all the time, Agent Morgan. Hmm. George! What are these scars? Just like your Mr. Zack. Something private. I don't have to tell you about it. Of course. Just like Zack. We can understand that, right, Zack? Anyway, this will make things a lot easier from now on. I'm glad to say you're both pretty much off the hook. Thank you for your cooperation. If anyone is suspicious around here, it's him. He's the most suspicious. No, I don't think so. But he certainly is the most irritating. We've studied the crime scene. You know what we have to do next, Zach. George! Can we arrange to have the town folk gather in one place? There are some things I want to address with the town folk. Very well. I'll arrange to have as many as possible gather in the community center tomorrow. Thank you, George. <laughs>